Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be reviewing Da Vinci Watercolor's newest color, Artemis. If you've been around for a while, then you may already know that I've never done a single color review. However, given that I have just recently reviewed Da Vinci Watercolors, it didn't make sense to do another review of them. Also, I really thought this color deserved its own video as it's so different from the rest of the line. If you would like to see my full review of Da Vinci Watercolors, I will leave that linked for you to check out. If you are curious about any of the materials that I've used in this video, including this color, they will all be linked in the description box down below. Also in the description box is a link to my Patreon page for anyone who appreciates this video or my content and would like to further support my channel. Now, Artemis is definitely what you would consider a specialty color. It's made of three pigments, and they probably aren't what you would expect. They are PG18 Viridian Green, PB29 Ultramarine Blue, and PR177 Anthroquinone Red. Da Vinci has given this color a light fastness rating of 1 or excellent. It is also rated as semi-transparent and staining. So, to start this review, a tiny bit of info on my own painting style for those who are new here. I'm not someone who uses these more specialty colors, really at all. I've always gravitated towards single pigment, non-granulating, very luminous colors. I love quinacridones and perilines, and I use a few other staples in my daily palette. I have, however, been recently trying to play with more unique or boutique colors. I really want to experience a little bit more of what watercolor has to offer and see how it incorporates into my own painting style. I also tend to lean a bit more on the realistic side for my illustrations, maintaining a lot of control over the process with wet on dry and a good amount of water control. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about this color. When I saw this color first shared by Da Vinci, they did a perfect job selling it. The moonscape painting that they used was so stunning. I love the mini circular landscape paintings, and the textural shots and color mixes that they showed made me, of all people, decide that I could give this whole granulating paint thing a go. On their website, the prime color swatch has a lot more variation to it. It had a lot of pink in it, and not much of that beautiful neutral color I thought I would be getting. I was thrown off by it, but I was so excited that I bought it anyway. Then of course, when the package arrived, I tore it open in excitement, running towards my studio to play with it. It was only then did I realize that I had no idea what I was getting into. I of course swatched it, and I liked the atmospheric quality to it, but I was surprised to see the paint separate into pink, blue, and gray. It was definitely somewhere in the middle of what the demos had shown and what the paint swatch had offered on the website. It's definitely a cooler gray, still what I would consider to be a neutral on my palette, but with an unpredictable pink to blue granulation. It seemed to have no real rhyme or reason to it, and I had no idea how to use it. I put it aside and didn't touch it for about a week, and then one day I decided to get into some tests. I started with a dilution test. I took a puddle of water and then I slowly added the tiniest amount of paint, adding more and more over time to shift the mix from its weakest value up to its mass tone. The first thing I noticed is that this paint isn't as pigmented as what I've come to expect from Da Vinci. It took a lot more paint than I expected to get even a medium dilution, but I'll talk about that a bit more later. As I swatched the paint, I started with the most diluted value. It was a very stunning gray. I would say it looks neutral to slightly warm, with almost no variation to it. The next swatch was almost like a new color. First it had taken on more of a cool gray overall. It has some atmosphere to it, but with no real granulation really sticking out. As I go to the third swatch, I could really start to see some variation in granulation happening. There was a lot of atmosphere and movement. The gray was very cool, but with a warm undertone creating this dusty purple type gray and light blue granulation. The next couple swatches were very similar to one another. The overall color was a cool purplish gray with a very distinct blue granulation. It had also started to develop areas of darker granulation, not quite black, but rather darker areas of this grayish purple color. I also noticed very small areas of warmer granulation that were almost unnoticeable unless looking closely. As I got to the more concentrated swatches, I really started to notice the cool black color, with granulation that started getting quite dark. This light blue granulation was still present, but being mostly hidden by these darker, near black, cool gray granulation spots. The warmer areas were also starting to take on more of a warm, purplish, or mauvey color. Then, finally, the most concentrated swatches were nearly black. 
The granulation was quite prominent, filling most of the overall swatch. The granulation that is present is almost entirely black, with no color variation present. The lighter areas visible in the swatch are a medium value cool gray. I saw no traces of purple or light blue in the final swatch. Next, I wanted to test the glazing capabilities of this color. Da Vinci watercolors glaze very well, but I wasn't sure how this granulating color would hold up. I did this test in a long strip, with sections 3 quarters of an inch apart. I applied a light to medium glaze to start, and I tried to keep this dilution throughout the rest of the test. Do keep in mind, however, that I did let each section air dry completely in between each glaze, and that the paint needed to be reactivated each time. The sections glazed extremely well, exactly like I had expected from this brand. I noticed a very clear mark between each glaze, and I had no issues with disturbed paint as I worked my way through the long swatch. I carried on one by one, and around the fifth glaze is when I started to notice some disturbance in the lower layers. It was still glazing well for the most part, but if I had worked the same area twice, even lightly, I was going to move the paint. Glazes 6 through 9 were done quite carefully, as the paint was getting quite easy to disturb at this point. And here is where I also started to notice a lot of binder buildup. This is an issue commonly brought up with Da Vinci watercolors, but not something that I have had many issues with in normal use. I find it's common when swatching directly from the pan, when you haven't taken the time to work the paint onto the palette. With most of their paints, I can glaze a lot without the shiny binder buildup happening. However, like I said earlier, this color is not as pigmented as I'm used to seeing from them, and it was taking a lot of paint for each layer, so I noticed a lot of binder buildup was happening quite rapidly at this point. I decided to finish the glazes at layer 9, the last few glazes being very dark, showing heavy black granulation, and the lightest areas showing through appearing to be a cool gray to a warm dusty purple. Comparing the mass tone from the dilution test to the glazing test mass tone area, I noticed that there was a difference in the appearance. The dilution test mass tone swatch, done in a single pass, being very patchy, with uneven granulation, it had a cooler undertone to the overall swatch and with less binder buildup, although I should mention that the binder shininess is still very much present. The Glazing Test Mass Tone Swatch is very even in its overall coloration and pigmentation. The color at first glance is passable for black with no patchiness. The granulation is evenly spread out, essentially filling the tooth of the paper. When closely examined, the underlying color is a very dark, warm, purplish gray. It also has a lot of noticeable binder buildup. Next, I wanted to test the flow of this paint. I could already sense it was going to do quite well here based on my earlier experiments, and this test did not disappoint. I wet the section with my clean water, allowing it to glisten but not puddle on my page. I then worked up a pretty dark mix of this paint with the same larger brush that I had been using throughout the rest of the tests. As I touch the paper, you can see the gray paint just starting to disperse out with what I would consider to be a medium flow. It's not as energetic as some paints or colors like Core, but you can definitely tell it likes to move wet on wet. As it flows, you can start to see some of the colors separate as they flow out further from the center. Once dried, you can see that the center stays mostly a dark gray to a bluish gray. The blue granulation particles don't travel very far, remaining close to the center. I've done this test a few times, and the more water that is present, the further the blue granulation particles will travel. In all tests, however, there is a breaking point where the cool gray overall color and the blue granulation stops. Then we notice the warm grayish purple color that keeps going, flowing, and feathering outward. These outward edges are quite soft and wispy, feathering out abruptly into the white paper. For the lifting test, I wanted to see how it lifted when wet and when dried. I painted my section with a rather dark mix, and then used the paper towel to blot one section of my wet swatch. The paint came up fairly well, but still noticeably stained, leaving behind a lot of granulation in the texture of the paper. The color of the stained paper retained that multicolor atmospheric look, looking mostly cool gray with a warm undertone, with some areas looking grayish purple. The granulation left behind was mostly light blue, with some darker gray granulation areas that weren't blotted as well. It's worth noting that some of the blotted areas have a unique look to them, almost as if to be a bit opaque.
Next, after letting the swatch dry, I used my brush to wet a linear area. I very lightly dragged my wet brush over the same section over and over. Once I could see the paint reactivating, I dried my brush and began the same motion, drying my brush after every pass. I cleaned off my brush once in my water and I repeated these steps again. The paint lifted fairly well, but the paper was still stained similarly to the first test. I will say that using this lifting method caused the paper to look more on the warm purple side rather than the cool gray of the wet blotted lifting test. With this method, I found there to be less granulation present in the lifted area, leaving a softer but still atmospheric look on the paper with some light cool variants matching the paper's texture. Finally, I wanted to see how the paint disperses when I blend out with a brush. This is a common technique I use when painting, so I wanted to see how it would do. I started by putting down an area of fairly dark paint, making sure to keep the painted area glistening wet to allow for flow. While the paint was still wet, and before any hard lines could develop, I rinsed off my brush and used it to pull the color out with water. What I noticed is that the flow of this paint makes it an active process. It wanted to follow the flow of water and can easily fill a space when wet. It makes it harder to get a clean, consistent gradient and can cause additional effects. However, it is important to note that similarly to the other Da Vinci watercolors, only the edge seemed to follow the water, leaving a harsh blending line where the rest of the paint section didn't gradually blend out. It's as if the paint is too dense to flow without being manually disturbed or manipulated. This test also showed a hard line from the blending point, with some light cauliflowering. Since this method with this brand only seems to pull from the very edge, the water doesn't make its way onto the untouched paint. That leaves you with a harsh, lightly cauliflowered look to the edge of where the newly blended area meets the original swatch. It's important to mention that this is not a characteristic of just this color, but rather a very common characteristic throughout Da Vinci's line of watercolors. So while I wasn't expecting this, I did expect this color to act a little bit differently. Like I said earlier in this video, I was surprised at how lightly pigmented this color is. Da Vinci is such a highly pigmented line. If I were to compare this brand overall to other paints in my collection, I would rate it as falling in right around with Daniel Smith. This color, however, was a little underwhelming. It took a lot of paint to get this darker value. I found myself constantly pulling from my paint dollop and oftentimes adding more paint to my palette trying to get that color to where I wanted it. Given the colors used, it just doesn't make any sense that it's as lightly pigmented as it is. However, this assessment could be in part because of my own lack of familiarity with colors like this. The only other similar color I have for comparison would be Cascade Green by Daniel Smith, and that has no problems with pigmentation. This color is one of the few in the Da Vinci line where I can clearly see an issue with shiny spots on the painting as it's nearly impossible to avoid when reaching those super dark colors regardless of method. Now there's something about this color in a single glaze that I find unappealing. It has this odd flatness to it, there's just no luminance. To me, it looks a bit like if you were painting on watercolor paper that had defective sizing. It has the look of paint that just sinks right in, leaving behind this dull, milky pale color. The flow tests show it really well, just how flat this color can be. Now at this point, I had no idea how I was going to use this color. I was really hoping that something would pop out at me while I was testing, but I was really just as confused as when I had started. It just wasn't clicking for me, and I had no idea if this color would maintain a spot in my collection. I had the idea to do a flower, not shocking if you're familiar with my current body of work, however I decided I wanted to do a white flower, which is something I still struggle with. I'm not gonna lie, I debated this for a while, thinking it would never work. I changed my mind a couple times, I looked up different subjects, different ideas, different flowers, and different colors to imitate. I sketched out several ideas and ultimately, I just gave up and went back to my first idea. If I'm being truly candid about my thoughts, I started with very little confidence. I just had that feeling that this wouldn't turn out and I would either need a plan B for this video or I would have some sort of disclosure saying that the painting didn't turn out as planned. However, to my deep surprise, I really fell in love with this color quickly. And when I say quickly, I mean it. I really started to see the usefulness of this color almost right away. The shadows I was creating in the folds of these flower petals were so impactful. It has a stunning softness to it and it manages to give a body and depth to white shadow areas that no color has given me before. 
It so delicately bounces through the range of colors that it offers, and while you can't predict it, it still manages to look beautifully planned. I love the effortless color variation in this piece. At a quick glance, it has this beautiful range of grays, staying fairly warm to a bit of a purple gray. If I were to take a guess at what color this would be closest to, I would have to say it's probably a neutral tint. When you start to look a little bit closer, you can see even more variation, but not as much as I'd expected. There are some areas that have this really beautiful, delicate, mauve pink color, and then others that just have this more stony gray color. One thing noticeably missing is the blue granulation. I have no idea how or why it's missing. It's painted on the same paper as the tests and the swatches, yet that characteristic is missing entirely. That's not to say I miss it. I actually love that this painting took on more of a shadow purple color. However, I'm very confused and I'm curious to know how the addition of that blue granulation would have affected the final piece had it been present. Originally, I thought it could be from having more water control than in the testing I did, but I was using a similar brush, just a different size. Both times, there was a good amount of water in the brush and in the puddle of paint that I was working from. Next, I wondered if it could be from using paint that had sat overnight. The tests were done on one day and the painting done the next. However, I did have to reactivate the paint several times on the first day, and this caused no similar effect. Also, like I mentioned earlier, I used the same paper each day. Ultimately, I have no idea what causes variation, and all I can assume is that it's just part of the natural variation of this paint. And at the end of the day, you can never really be completely certain how your painting will turn out. Also, as you've probably noticed, I have decided to do this as a color study painting, using only this color. If I were doing this as a normal painting, I probably wouldn't have taken this color as far as I did. I really wanted this color to be on full display, so I pushed the values a bit more than I would under normal circumstances in order to show the full range and characteristics a bit more. Of course, joke's on me because it did what it wanted to do anyway. Also, I probably would have used a couple more colors to really increase the depth and interest of this painting. I'm not at all disappointed with how it came out, but those are a couple things that I would change. In the end, I really ended up liking this color. It has so much depth and atmosphere to it. It's very apparent to me that this color has so many capabilities beyond what I have even tried so far. This is, of course, more of a first impressions for this color, as I really just wanted to help others know if this would be a good choice for them or not. However, with the varying results I got from it, I can't really give any good advice on who it could work for or how to even get certain effects with it. At the end of the day, I think it just comes down to whether or not you like to experiment or take risks in your own painting practice. I think this is a really beautiful color, and I'm really happy with the painting I did. I personally will continue to look into using this color as a shadow color because of the depth and variation it can add. I also think you can't go wrong with a color study using this color. I think the more you play with it, the more you will learn. I hope that you found this video helpful, and if you have tried this color, I would love to know your thoughts on it. If you know of any colors similar to this and think they're worth checking out, let me know. I'm having so much fun playing with these new colors, and I love making videos on supplies to help others. If you enjoyed this video and found value in it, please let me know by liking, subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, leaving a comment down below, or sharing this video with anyone who might find it helpful. Also, if you appreciate this kind of content that I make and would like to further support my channel, my Patreon page is linked in the description box down below. There you will also find a list of benefits that come with being a patron. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!